Amen. Let the church say amen. Come on, we can do better than that. Say amen. We come today to celebrate. Hallelujah. The life. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. With the family. To celebrate the life, the legacy, the trial. Amen. At this time, we're going to have Elder Pastor Carol Wesley come with our invocation, followed by scripture by Bishop A.L. Williams, and then a solo by Sister Evelyn Price. God bless you.
shall not prevent them which are asleep. Mm -hmm. For the Lord himself wow. shall descend from heaven with a shout, yes, sir. with the voice Bishop. of the archangel. Amen. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Family, let the Lord comfort you. God bless.
Hello. He 
will be missed. I mean, greatly. And I, I'm just thankful to have had the opportunity to have this young man in my life. And how, like I say, he was my family. Still is. He will be missed. Appreciate you, T.J. Calling me let me know what happened. I was talking to him that Thursday. That time I video chatted with him, got that call signed.
you know, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm angry. You know, it just don't seem fair at all. And I don't want to stand up here. I thought I'm okay because I'm not. Um, he was a very, he really loved my son. And yesterday it really hurt me when my son really knew who he was. And he was up there trying to talk to him. And my dad couldn't talk to him back. Good. And he could say, hey, boo boo. He could say, hey, how about that man? He could have said nothing. And my son was at this smile, trying to talk to him, pointing at him. It makes it just hurt so bad. I just can't. And I'm not okay. And I really just wish he was here right now. Because he was born at my day with now. He might have seen how he was always at work, but my dad loved me. I was his only child. He really loved me. And it hurts, it hurts because I told my dad Christmas morning and he told me, he was like, V, I just need some rest. I just need all the support. I just need all the love from him. But I know he's looking down on me, him and my grandma, and I know they're happy. And they see the women that I'm becoming. And he know I can take care of myself, because my dad ain't never put it past me. He couldn't put it past nobody. You can work and take care of yourself. And you can do what you gotta do. Because he did, he made a way every time. He made it. And it's just sad. But I really appreciate y'all for doing this and coming out and supporting him. Just under 
He touched so many people in so many different ways in Maryland and DC. And I know there's no way to share or share with everybody. But if y'all only knew how many lives that I'm about to change just by showing them and still them power I mean, you wouldn't be able to feel this church for now. And everything he loved. He loved it hard. Once he brought it over, he was a good father and I would have nothing to stop him from what his mission was for whatever he was. That was a good man. He still is a good man. I love him. Thank you.
And if he didn't, you knew it. It was one of those little words. I spoke to him. Six hours before he died. I had been calling him. He had not answered the phone. I called Vera. His aunt. But his aunt. Said, Vera, have you talked to Tron today? She said, Yeah, I talked to him earlier. I'm going to call him back. He wasn't doing good. So I tell him I'm trying to call him. I'm, she knew I was in the Bahamas. Tell him I'm calling from a strange number. Tell him now to the phone. That Sunday morning, the Sunday afternoon at the 12 o'clock hour, I called. The first time he didn't pick up. The second time he picked up. I said, Tron. Then I stopped because I was getting ready to say, How are you doing? But I heard it in his breathing. I said, Boy, it sounds like you got no more. I said, I'm just tired. I didn't know Tyet was unto death. I began to encourage him and I made him aware that we are praying for you. I just didn't know that that was the last prayer. My heart began to go out because my brother was ill. And I began to tell God about it. As I began to tell him, I knew everything was going to be all right. Six hours later, I got the phone call. He was famous. I'm responsible. But I still had the hope of glory. Watch yourself, Pete. I never give up on faith. Because I know who God is. But I just believe that I know my Redeemer lives. That. I know it in my heart. And I believe that Tron got a taste in his heart of the Redeemer. I told him, get to Jesus. He'll heal your body. I do believe that in those hours I wasn't there. But as the angel of mercy came, sweeping by. He began to shout out, I got a new home over in Zion. And it's mine. All mine. I got a new home. Open It's mine. I believe that's what he said. Gave up everything. Forgot about us. Jerry, he forgot all about you. Let me get out of here. Vivian, he forgot all about you. He had to give it up. Come on, God. We come on, like, I ain't got no more over here. It's all over with. Child. It's something different about that baby girl. I promise y'all you 
But I just want to sing a, a song to, to comfort the hearts, maybe. There's an old song that they said, we'll walk around heaven all day. And we'll be in the key of Z flat. Z flat. Z flat. One of these mornings, it won't be long. You look for me and I'll be gone. Oh, no. I'm going to a place where I have nothing, nothing to do. But just walk around heaven all day. Samantha Jones, following her will be the deputy Williams, the most ancient union grand court. Hello, everyone. 
I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will reward me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have loved his appearing. Second Timothy 4, chapter 7 through the 8th verse. Expressions of condolences. In tribute to the life of Mr. Antron Strawbridge. Not how did he die, but how did he live? Not what did he gain, but what did he give? These are the units of measure, the worth of a man as a man, regardless of birth. Not what was his church, nor what was his creed. But had he befriended to a smile, to vanish a tear. Not the sketch in the newspaper will say, but how many were sorry when he passed away. Whereas God in his just and divine providence has called Mr. Antron Strobridge, beloved brother of companion guardian, Terry Scott of Alicia Court Number 6, to his heavenly home to abide in all eternity, we bow in humble submission to divine will, and we give thanks for his time and presence among us. Whereas we draw comfort in knowing Mr. Antron Strobridge has found a safe refuge in the Lord and in our hearts forever. His passing has left a profound loss, but also a legacy of love and service. He allowed his light to shine for all the world to see. Our sorrowful loss in heaven's rejoicing gain. Whereas Mr. Strawbridge used his God-given gifts in helping others, mentoring students in Job Corps, Broward County Community College, and in Washington, D.C. area. He also served as an outstanding community advocate in helping others to aim for higher goals. Therefore, be it resolved that companion guardian Terry Scott and the bereaved family have, have the love and support of the Russell Alexander Earl Senior Grand Court Ladies of the Circle of Perfection, State of Florida, PHA, we offer prayers of encouragement, sol solace, and comfort. Keep in your hearts the words of Jesus, our Savior, who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you until the end of time. Be it also resolved, the life and memories of Mr. Antron Strobridge will be kept forever in the archives of family, friends, and those he touched in his journey through life. Rest in peace, Mr. Antron Strowbridge, and rise in the power of resurrection. Respectfully and prayerfully submitted this 16th day of January in the year of our Lord, 2022. Roseanne Brown, Royal Matron, Royal Matron Roseanne Brown, 8th Royal Grand Perfect Matron, Companion Guardian William Williams, Royal Grand Chief Advisor, Royal Matron Samantha Jones, Royal Grand Secretary. Amen. Oh. 
away. One of the spirits, flowers. And follow the spirit of Brother Artron L. Strawbridge. Brother, our own hero, Terry Scott, Grand Court Chaplain, home to be with him throughout eternity. The death of Brother Strawbridge again emphasizes at home that none is superior to its last call, which is common to all beings. Again, we are reminded that the way of man leads to the grave. And they who walk with the master here shall not tarry in the grave, but he shall be led gently into the land of life and beauty. Our beloved friend has fallen in life's battle, acknowledged the supremacy of death, yielded to the victory that no one can resist, and entered upon the complete rest. It is declared in the beginning, all must die. But we shall rise from death to everlasting life if we are faithful unto death in the cause of Christ. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring unto him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 and 18. Be it resolved that we share every sorrow of the Marini family and extend it to them our deepest sympathy and that we stand always ready to welcome them to the cross, for earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Amen. That a copy of this resolution be given to the family, and a copy will be
This beautiful arrangement comes with these words. With deepest sympathy from Holy Royal Art Chapter 164 and Delta Lodge 519. Keep boiling, little girl. Love always, Teresa. Iron, Lyric, and Amber. This beautiful arrangement comes with these words. Our hearts go out to you. We are sorry for your loss. With deepest sympathy and condolences from the Stone family. This beautiful bleeding heart comes with deepest sympathy from Poppy, gone but not forgotten. Spray that drapes the casket with love and deepest sympathy from the family with all of our love. Miss me, but let me go. Not with your heads bowed down, but look at the emails from which I'm a and know that all your help comes from heaven alone. For it's not goodbye, it's only good night, but we will see you in the morning.
for that day to be with my Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap off on our prayer. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready for the eulogy. We understand that it's the word that keeps us. It's the word that comforts us. We want to hear. So we're going to call the family choir to give us a, a selection. For the next voice you hear will be that of the Bishop Noel P. Scott Sr. Hey, put your hands together and receive it.
Yeah. 
to determines what you become. Who you walk with determines what you receive and become. I wish you understood this, that God is saying to you and I today, he says in Luke 12 and 40, be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man coming at the hour we think not. This is an amazing portion of scripture because when you think not, the Son of Man is going to come. What powerful favor was on the lips of Jesus. Jesus pours out something to us. In other words, Jesus is saying there is no subject of importance that Jesus did not explain himself. There is no duty he did not enforce. There is no error he did not expose. There is no danger he did not point out. Jesus is fully acquainted, not merely with the secrets of nature, but with the mysteries of the unseen world. He brought time and eternity, the visible and the invisible, the passing and the permanent. Jesus taught all of us what he was really all about. In other words, Jesus says, there's not one subject that can ever happen in the earth that I don't know about. In other words, the Bible says, everything that was made, that you see and don't see, that was created by him for him and nothing that exists could not exist because of him so people of God you and I for two things I want to point out to you you and I are dependent upon unseen certainty that's mind boggling right there what you and I are dependent upon is unseen seen certainty comparing death with the coming of the son of man they are both uncertain no calculation can put anticipate it no preparation can postpone it I need you to grasp hold of this y'all got to get this I said no calculations can anticipate death no preparation can postpone debt. You got to grab this, y'all. I got to say this one more again. I said no calculation can anticipate when death is going to come and knock on your door. What are you saying, Doyle? I'm saying to you, get ready. There's a train that pick it up passengers from coast to coast. You better get your life in order. Because we know not the day that the Son of Man is coming. We're dependent upon an unseen certainty.
We have dived into the depths of the ocean and brought up the truth. We go into the bowels of the earth and ransacked the center of the globe. And we brought the wealth back to our cities. We have discovered the origins of almost every disease and traced it to sources every kind of contagion. We have found out in the animal and vegetable kingdoms remedies for all kind of disorders and relief from all kind of pain. But watch this, people. We have never, ever, never, ever will be able to determine when somebody's going to die. Few as our days, we do not know our limits. Don't know whether we're going to die young, middle age, or old. So people of God, we have an appointment at death. We're like a little baby born from his mother's womb. We'll hail that that account when it comes to death. When if mom give the baby any milk, the baby will starve. That's the kind of God that you and I serve. If God don't give us favor, we cannot have life. Open up your mouth. I'm talking to people in the church. I need you to open up your mouth.
This is a reminder. Six hours after he talked with his family, he was gone. No amount of crime. No bring it back. But let us not build no more. Can I say this? I won't call it it. Specific name of the son of our family ran to go get a vaccination. That alone is not what killed him. I talked with the nurse. They were devastated that they could not get a 44 year old man's heart to walk again. So he had a massive heart attack. And it was in a piece of shape. It was his time. That's, that's the difficult thing right there. That's what we have the most difficulties in acknowledging, being real with ourselves. We rather somebody lie to us. But the real deal is, you got to get ready. Hello? You got to get ready. I, I, I want to challenge you to get ready for your baby. Because you don't know when he's coming for you. Are you ready? Songwriter wrote a song. I already quoted some of it. But the name of that song I was saying, people get ready. There's a train that's coming. But, but that song starts out with a question Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I used to sing that song right here. Right there in that choir stand. I was born and raised in Pentecostal church, but this was a junk church when I was a teenager. 50 years ago, this church was the junk church. Had the baddest youth gospel choir in the South Florida. We used to go everywhere and sing. We were called the FD Kitchen Choir. We had the baddest musician in the land. Make that piano and organ talk. We went everywhere. This was the junk church. And our message was powerful. And listen to me, I love you too much to try to preach you a glossy message. No, I got to tell you too. Can't force it on you. But get acquainted with your neighbor. Can I challenge you to get acquainted with your neighbor? Can I challenge you to stop going around trying to get the preacher to show you who you are when the word of God already tells you who you are? Can I encourage you to stop saying, well, uh, the, the preacher don't prophesy to me. The word of God prophesies you. Because the preacher only prophesies in part. The Bible says he knows in part. He prophesies in part. So guess what? Even if he prophesied to you, it might not be everything. It's not going to be everything. And it might not turn out the way you thought it was. But the word of God will never change. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of God, word not gonna change. People of God, I love you. Children of God, Stroke Bridge family, Scott family, I love you. Love this family. I love this family. Me and your family, after you, y'all don't know this, we were rolled, y'all. Willie Afro, he was a little older, but he allowed me to hang out with him every now and then. But me and Dean, right here in this church, I moderated his funeral. Right by his mama sitting right there. Y'all don't know that. Tell you the truth too hard sometimes. But if you don't change your ways, hell 
will be your home. But I love you so much, and I got to the point. That's not a vision. Everybody but the family is saved. God, the family is going to pray for the family while the family is saved. But I want, I want to try to invoke something in her prayer. Got to feel that I want you to pray for the unsaved. Those that may be saved, but they, they're walking on, on jagged edges, on eggshells. When you pray for them to get saved, when you pray for those that are weak and weary in this walk, get saved again. I know you have a, an appointment and an assignment to pray for them. Will you at least pray for them? Save that struggle and the ones that need to be saved. God bless you. Thank God for the man of God. Lord, my heavenly Father, we stop by to say thank you. Thank you for the years that you left trying here. I believe it was 44, it was 44 appointed years for this appointed time. He was ready to go. But now, Lord, for those that are still here, we realize that weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning. Lord, allow the weeping to cease. That, that the family will look at the joyful times they spent with Trump. They will think about the good times they had with it. The times that he laughed and he gave love. Lord, allow them to see that. But now, Lord, for the family members and friends that have not made a personal connection to you, they have not accepted you as their personal Savior. Lord, I'm asking right now where they're standing. I don't want anybody to raise their hands. I just want you to give God your heart so that you'll be able to see Trump again. Give it your heart now. That's all he's asking for. He's not asking for you to jump and shout. He's not asking for you to give a whole lot of money. But he's asking for your heart. Right now, when you're standing, I plead with you to accept Christ as your personal Savior. He's waiting on you. Yes, you. He's talking to you right now. Accept him as your personal savior. That one day, not only will you see Tron again, but you'll see your savior face to face. It's my prayer.
Thank you. 